I'll take you through the basics of the Xerox Work Center 3655. We'll start with an overview of the device, so how to load the feeder and paper trays, change supplies, clear jams, followed by how to navigate the control panel and its functions. So copy, scan, fax, and the address book. So feel free to skip ahead, but let's get to it. We'll go over the device from the top down. The document feeder holds 60 originals. You can load it face up. Uh, notice that there's a little green light that shows you when it's ready. Um, if you choose to use the glass, that's fine too. You'll load it face down on the, uh, the back left corner there as such. Let's zoom into the touch screen and the control panel. You'll press services home here to access your functions. Job status is going to show you your past and current jobs. Machine status will show your faults and supply levels. Your number pads in the middle there. And then there's a big green start button to the right. Next to that is your stop. And then your yellow clear all button. That's to clear your settings. Moving on to the paper trays. Most of the devices are going to have two. You're going to have your first one there. That's the manual feed that just flips down. Insert the paper all the way toward the back till it stops. You can have multiple sheets in there. Uh, going down to tray one, uh, you just basically insert the paper pretty easy. This whole tray actually comes out if you need to get back there for jam clearance. After you've inserted paper on the screen, you'll see a confirmation message. You'll need to just confirm the size and the type of paper. Um, these settings make sure the device then treats the paper correctly using the right speed, heat, and electricity. Most time it'll be just plain paper, but just select your settings and press confirm. When prompted to change supplies, you'll access the front door by swiveling the control panel to the left. And then you can just grab the handles on either side, flip it down as such. There's your toner cartridge right here. We'll need to unlock it first to remove it. So we simply unlock and then pull it out. You'll grab the new one out of the box, simply plug it in. There's a little channel on the left that'll make sure that it goes in properly. Um, but that's it. Then you just have to lock it back up and then you're set. Now, if you're changing the whole maintenance kit, um, you can grab this whole thing. There's a little black handle out front. Uh, everything's locked up here. Just simply pull it out like so. You'll see the drum on the other end, um, but you'll grab this whole maintenance kit, which also includes the toner, um, out of there and then out of the box. And then you will simply push it in and close the door. If there is a jam, we're going to spin this around. Uh, there's a little door handle on the back. You open that door, the fuser's right there, that big black piece, just pull the paper out, close the door up. The best way to prevent jams is to combat the environmental effect of static and humidity. So if you simply fan the paper before loading it in a tray, the sheets will have less of a reason to stick together or get stuck. To make a copy from the services home screen, press the copy button. Here you'll see the main menu. On the left-hand side, you can select reduce and large options, then your paper supply, and then your two-sided copying options. We'll pause here to explain the language of the two-sided menu. The number on the left is the number of sides on the originals. The number on the right is the number of sides on the copies. You have other tabs along the top too. Image quality is where you can go to lighten or darken your copies. Layout adjustment, you can erase edges. Uh, but honestly, you're mostly going to stick with this main screen. So basically load your original face up in the feeder, select your number of copies and press start. To scan the email from the services home screen, you'll press the email button. Now you can manually enter a recipient or you can use the device address book. Here we've just got one listed, but you'll have more. Um, you'll press that name, press two. And then right from there, you can either press start or you can press OK up top right to then access other settings. So you've got two sided scanning settings, the attachment name. You can also change the subject. I'll press it so you can see the keyboard that appears. You can type, press OK. The whole point is load your original, add a recipient, and then press the start button. I want to show you how to scan multiple sets of originals individually, but then have them combined into one file. So first press the job assembly tab at the top right, then press build job and turn it on. Now you'll load your first set of originals and then press the start button. The device will then scan those first uh, originals there, but it won't send the scan yet. So then you just load your next set of originals, press start again and repeat, right? You can load it in the feeder, you can load it on the glass. 
Um, but basically, just keep loading and pressing start until you're all done. After the last set of originals is scanned, you'll press submit job on the top right, and then all the scans will combine into one file. To send a fax from the services home screen, you'll press the green fax button. You'll press enter recipient on the left. And then this is where you can type in the number. You can either use the number pad on the screen or on the control panel, but then press add and then the start button. You can also select names from the address book. So in the device address book button, you'll have names listed. You select them and then press start. The easiest way to save fax numbers and email addresses into the device is through its web interface. You access that by typing its IP address into a web browser. Um, and then you'll click up top here, the address book. Now it'll make you log in. Uh, the default user ID is admin. Default password is 1111. And here you'll see the address book menus. There's a big manually add a contact button right here um, that we can press. There's also add, edit, and delete up top. Um, you can press any of these to be able to add a contact. I'm going to use the little guy up top left, and here you'll see the fields that you can enter. So you're going to use the same address book for both email and fax numbers. Um, so first, let's put in our recipient's display name. Um, for this example, we're going to include an email and a, a fax, but you can include one or the other. So here's the email, and here's their fax number. If you're Fax line requires a prefix like nine or a one to dial out. You want to make sure that you put that number in here. But this is it. So name is in the display name field. Email is in the email field. Fax is obviously in the fax field. Um, you can either uh, add another contact after saving. You can click this button down in the bottom left or simply press save. And then it'll instantly show up on the Xerox devices control panel for folks to use. It'll be helpful to save this website as a favorite in your internet browser. Uh, you can also create a shortcut on your desktop if you prefer that. Um, you'll right click on an empty area, select new, and then shortcut from the menu. Here you'll just copy and paste the web address like so. Click next. And then you just type a name for the shortcut like Xerox address book and then finish. So that'll create a, a little icon, a shortcut there. So when you click that icon, you'll be able to jump right back in the address book and you can add and edit your, uh, your recipients.